Natalie Kunzman, MD, and today we are talking about the ileocecal valve. And it is a sphincter muscle valve that separates the small intestinal tract from the large intestine or the colon. And this little bugger is almost forgotten in my world and in the teachings in med school, but yet the dysfunction of this can lead to the trickle-down effect of several conditions, and those conditions are what wind up getting treated. So its critical function is to limit the reflux of colon contents back into the ileum, which is the lowest portion of the small bowel. Now, approximately, approximately two liters of fluid enter the colon on a daily basis through that ileocecal valve. Now, the ileocecal valve is quite distinctive because it seems to be the only site in the GI tract that is used for vitamin B12 and some of the bile acid absorption. So, <clears throat> when it does not function properly, the fecal reflux increases and it increases the risk of bacterial colonization in that ileum, which will result in bacterial overgrowth. And then the loss, let's say, of the control of the ileocecal valve may cause an anterograde flow that may reduce some of the transit time into that colon, and then it can decrease absorption. So those who present with ileocecal valve present with shoulder pain, lightheadedness, GERD, which has become nearly ubiquitous with patients in America, constipation when it's closed, diarrhea when it's open, nausea, ringing in the ears, almost like a bursitis-like pain in the shoulders and the hip joints, low back pain maybe for no reason, some people will also present with dizziness, chest pain, heart fluttering, headaches, and fever. So does this sound like any of you? So the valve itself can at times either be stuck shut or stuck open. So if the ileocecal valve is closed, then we may have a constipation issue where the stool is just stuck in the small bowel and can't get into the colon. But if it's wide open and dysfunctional in that regard, diarrhea will be the problem. So what causes our ileocecal valve to become dysfunctional? Well, spicy or high roughage type foods might irritate that valve and cause it to stick shut or open. Foods that are most likely to irritate the ileocecal valve are very coarse cereals, chips, popcorn, nuts, and of course seeds, spicy foods, and here it goes, chocolate, caffeine, and alcohol, which is high in our American diet. Don't forget, Stress can also cause some dysfunction with the valve, and we're not exactly sure what all the factors are, but sometimes after an appendectomy, which lives close in that area, the problem will worsen. So how can we close or improve the ileocecal valve functioning when it's stuck open? Okay, so when that valve is open, as a reminder, diarrhea, loose stools, and some things that I previously mentioned may be the symptoms. So there are some things that can work maybe temporarily. So with that ileocecal valve being located about halfway, be be halfway between the belly button and the hip bone, sometimes you can get relief in a couple ways. You can place your hand over the valve and while pushing in, you are pulling up toward the shoulder. And a second thing to do to maybe help temporarily is to basically take an ice pack 
to that same area and hold it there for about 15 or 20 minutes. And this process obviously can be repeated if necessary. Now, first, the toxic food products that are either backing it up or blocking it up in the intestines need to be detoxified. And sometimes you can do that with garlic and chlorophyll, which will come from the algae family. And I find that chlorophyll works best and it's pretty easy to obtain at many of your local health stores. And initially you might want to take two caplets or the approximation of a half a teaspoon liquid every couple of hours for about the next six to eight hours and the same amount with maybe the next several meals over the next three or four days. So obviously we would want to, for the time being, modify the diet in such a way that spicy food can be eliminated as well. Don't forget that the roughage type food intake is helpful to eliminate for a short period of time. And of course, if the valve is closed and the constipation is a problem, then you may want to increase that roughage. And you will note that any step along the way, we are not talking about laxatives, we are not talking about enemas, and we are not talking about medications that are improving or changing the motility of the colon. We are talking about very simple things. Again, for the time being, consider elimination of alcohol, cocoa, chocolate and caffeine products from the diet. Now, supplements including vitamin B12 and vitamin C support the functioning of the digestive system and the bile acid absorption. And sometimes if we're talking about a closed valve, if we add the addition of vitamin D and calcium in the diet, there may be some improvements. Also for the open valve, dysfunction. We can add lactic acid or yeast wafer diets to the diet and of course that can be um, found at most of your local health food stores as well. So there of course are some stubborn cases of this condition and in that particular case this is when you may need to add the chlorophyll tablets to soothe and heal the bowel. So there are reflex points for both the open and closed ileocecal valve and these areas can be massaged with firm pressure for 10 to 20 seconds at a time and most of those points might be extremely sore if the problem has been an ongoing long-standing problem and you may actually need a friend to help you do this or some mild vibrational source to the area. So there you have it, ileocecal valve dysfunction. I will also say that if it has been going on for a long period of time, consider, consider SIBO testing, which we talked about, small intestinal bowel overgrowth, because if this has gone on for a long period of time, the bacteria may actually need treatment. Okay, friends, so that was ileocecal valve. I entertain any questions you may have. Subscribe to my channel below. And until we meet again, be well.